All right, let's talk about Brian Burns, the newest member of the New York Giants. So the Giants trade a second and a fifth round pick. And again, it's a high second round pick, right? So, uh, but Brian Burns, very good player. I want to talk about the the good and the bad and kind of the whole logic behind this trade itself from both teams' perspectives, but mostly what Burns is going to bring to the Giants. So uh, starting off with a play like this, I think this is maybe what you look at as the critique of Brian Burns. Is it, you know he's not necessarily an analytics darling, right? Like he doesn't win consistently, snap after snap after snap. Uh, although he he's good, like he, he's a quality pl- uh, player in that regard. But like this play, he's he's not winning. Uh, you know, uh, good job by the right tackle. Uh, Burns not really getting much pressure right here. This is something that, again, it's an, you're a defensive lineman. On most snaps, you're not getting a pressure, right? Uh, it's, you know, uh, the average defensive lineman. You know, if you can get pressure like 15% of the time, you're an elite edge rusher, right? However, for Carolina, they're getting pressure elsewhere. Up the middle, there is kind of pressure coming in. So Baker feels like he has to try and figure out a way to give himself more time. It's a third down and four situation. As you see, Baker tries to scramble up. It does not work out. Burns is the one who makes the sack. And you could look at that and say, well, that's a cl- what we usually call a cleanup sack, right? It's not necessarily a just amazing, unbelievable play by Burns to get the sack. And, and he has some of these on his resume. But guess what? Guess who he has as teammates right now, specifically Dexter Lawrence, who, I mean, listen, Brian uh, Burns is coming from a place that had a great defensive lineman in Derrick Brown, but now it's not just Dexter Lawrence. You also have, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau, who has shown flashes of greatness, although maybe needs to be a bit more consistent. But if, you know, if this has a lot of other really good defensive linemen, Burns is amazing at these cleanup sacks. And while some people might view it as a negative, I don't actually know if that's totally fair. Because while, yes, it's very much dependent on what situation you're in, he's in a situation where he will get these opportunities, and I could see him getting a ton of cleanup sacks with the Giants, which at the end of the day, if you're getting the quarterback to the ground, who cares who deserves the credit? Something like this is a very interesting play, I think. So it's going to be, a again, a one-on-one matchup. And I want to be clear with Burns. He is the kind of guy who can win one-on-one matchups. I'm not saying he can't. He can, I mean, obviously, uh, that'd be an insane take. He can win it at a very high level. Uh, maybe not quite as much as like TJ Watt or Miles Garrett, which he is getting paid in that ballpark now. But he still can win at a very high level. Watch as one this play begins. You see right here, he's kind of faking as though he's going towards the outside a little bit. Kind of trying to sell as though he's going in that direction. And it's going to really be Burns' left hand hand and his speed that comes into play. First, first let's talk about the left hand and what he's able to do there. Watch him kind of sidestep the, uh, you know, tackle, you know, gets, uses the hand and get the uh, tackle's right hand out of the way. And he's going to go for an inside move. Inside moves are dangerous, right? Because you really have to have the speed to be able to pull this off. But quite frankly, Brian Burns is, you know, debatably the fastest edge rusher in in football in terms of, like, game speed from this spot. There might be guys with faster 40 and all that, right? But I feel like from this point on, watch what he's going to do. Look at how quickly he closes that gap and hits. C.J. Beathard was the quarterback on that play and, you know, helps disrupt that play. Very good at these types of moves. And again, with a good defensive line he's joining, there could be, you know, maybe more freedom for him, more one-on-one matchups. He can get a bit more creative and you might see him you know, some of those numbers go up, you know, advanced numbers go up because he's in better situations. I could certainly see that happening. Also stuff like this, he's just so good at stunts. He might be the best in football at this. I really mean that. uh, And, you know, when it comes to these kind of plays where first a teammate of Burns is, is going to run in that direction. What's he doing with doing that? He's trying to get the left guard and left tackle both to block him. Then what happens with Burns is that is what Burns will do, kind of run in between the guard and the center. Hopefully the guard doesn't pick it up quick enough and can't get over to block Burns and Burns gets a straight shot to the quarterback. That's what you're hoping happens. As you see when it begins, it's working. Well executed by Carolina, there is a straight shot to get to the quarterback. And like I said, you know, for Burns, he's so explosive. Watch him just sprint through. He does get to Beathard. He is able to get that sack. Really well done. These are the kind of things Burns can bring to the table. And not just these kind of things. I think he can be helpful in other ways that maybe people aren't necessarily thinking of. Like one of the ways I think about is, hey, 
Philadelphia has won the division for the past two years. Sure, we're kind of unclear on where they're at, but that's a team you have to pay attention to. Burns could be a really you know, good asset in trying to stop some of the design runs Philadelphia does. A play like this, for example, where it's going to be, uh, you know, a play action towards the top of the screen. Quarterback's going to roll out towards the bottom of the screen. They also have another player kind of towards the bottom of the screen who's going to fake as though he's blocking Burns, but then it's going to run a route. Actually, I believe he's going to uh, move up to the next level and block another player. But anyways, let's see what happens. So this play begins and Brian Burns right here again. It'd be very easy to be misled as to what's happening. Very easy to block. Just, you know, go kind of get around Evan Ingram. Do what you can to get around Evan Ingram and then, you know, be taken out of the play. As you see, that's kind of what happens right there a little bit. But Burns does still notice what's going on. He still keeps his eyes downfield and sees the quarterback is running with the football. And again, watch Burns be able to track him down. He has that athleticism, does not get fooled by the move. Again, listen, it's C.J. Beathard, okay? I'm not saying it's Lamar Jackson, but still, it, it goes to show what he can do. And having that kind of athleticism off the edge could really work in these types of situations. It really can. So it's definitely, I think, you know, I, I don't know if that's the reason they did it, but maybe a nice plus for the Giants is they have someone who could, you know, have a chance, uh, ch make it easier to stop Jalen Hurts, which is something they, you know, have at times in recent history struggled with. And also just the running game, which the running game, you know, being good in the running game helps against every team. I do think that's a real underrated aspect of an edge rusher. And you see right here, it is a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a left tackle. Watch when this begins. You see right here, though, he's so quick at the line, just gets straight past him, which is a bit of a risk, right? That's where the ball carrier is. He is going to have to get over and try and make a play. It's a dangerous situation going that quickly because you could have just taken yourself out of the play. You're kind of having to bet on having the athleticism to also then get back over and make a tackle. And is he going to do that? Well, what do you think? Yes, Burns does, in fact, get over there. He does, in fact, make the tackle. Really good job there by Burns. That's just kind of what he can what he can do. Listen, I think there's a, you know, I, I've on this channel before, I've given my kind of uh, thoughts on if that's the best idea, to go out and trade for a edge rusher to also pay, make them one of the highest paid edge rushers, especially in Burns' case, which is like, I don't think he's... Uh, a top five edge rusher in the league. I think he's very good. I think he's like certainly top 25. He's, he's the number one edge rusher for sure. And I get what the Giants are doing. They're trying to create an identity, build through the trenches, which again, you know, look at what Philadelphia has done, kind of doing some very similar stuff. It is a lot of money for Brian Burns. It is. The cap did also just jump up a bunch too. So that, that kind of always changes things, right? Like sure, you know, one of the highest paid defensive linemen, but also, you know, we know how this works at this point, right? cap keeps jumping up so when you hit the open market you tend to be the highest you know every year there's you know a, a dozen new highest paid players uh it feels like at their respective positions so yeah it, that's kind of what's what's happening but as a whole again we can debate whether it's a smart move or a, a dumb move like for carolina i said i would mention them uh, at the beginning of this video, I think for them, I get what they're doing. They're trying to act, get some resources to put on the offensive side of the ball to help out Bryce Young. I think it's a smart move. Yes, they should have taken two first round picks uh, for you know, by the Rams, but you know, uh, sunk cost fallacy. You can't go back in time and make that deal. You're where you're at now. You got kind of got to just do what you can. But for the you know uh, for the Giants, it, it's at least again, will it work out? Will it help them or will it not help them? I don't know, but is it an exciting move if you're a Giants fan? It is, although I will be honest here. It's not the move I would have made personally. I, I think I would have probably, uh, you know, gone somewhere else, spent, spent those resources elsewhere when I do think they're kind of in a rebuild, but he should be a good player for a long time. Both things can be true. That's what I think about all this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.